Hi there and welcome to my introduction to Flutter. If you haven't seen Flutter before, it's a open source UI framework developed by Google. And this video has an introduction to Flutter article over at flutteracademy.com. So you can either follow along on the video or the article, it's up to you. So it allows us to make cross-platform native iOS and Android applications using Dart. And as always with most modern application development frameworks and titles, it allows us to take advantage of hot reloading and a variety of other features that helps make our applications much better to develop. So to get started, we'll of course be installing Flutter on our machine. So let's head over to flutter.io and we'll hit get started and you can follow the instructions either on Windows, Mac or Linux. It's quite simple. All you need to do is download the Flutter SDK and add it to your path and a variety of other things such as the Android and iOS SDKs if necessary. If you've ever used any other mobile app framework such as NativeScript, Ionic, or even done native app development before, you should be ready to go by simply just installing the Flutter SDK. Outside of that, we want to create a new Flutter application and that can be done by saying Flutter create once we of course have that inside of our path and then the name of our project. At this moment, we'll call our project demo. We'll then change directory and open that up inside of VS Code. So if you do get an error such as Flutter command not found, you'll need to ensure that Flutter has been added to your environment variables. Now you can check that out on Windows or Mac by simply just typing environment variables and then Mac or Windows. So let's head over to main.dart inside of the lib folder. And you can see that we have this one file that contains a class of my app and this extends the stateful widget. We then have this build function. And if we scroll down, you can see we then have a homepage class and this homepage state. Now, if you're looking at Flutter for the first time and we scroll through this 110 lines of code, you may find that you do feel a little bit confused. And that's because at this moment in time, you really haven't learned the difference between a stateless widget, a stateful widget, and the concepts of the build function. So what I want to do is instead delete everything and we'll build this from scratch. A more simplified version at least. So we have now the void main function, so that's our bootstrap function here, and that's gonna be running the app, spawning a new my app, which we're about to create. So let's make a new class, and that class is gonna be called my app, and it's gonna extend a stateless widget. And as far as a stateless widget goes at this moment, just know that effectively, this class does not manage its own state. We simply want to display the same content and that content will just be some text that says, hello Flutter. It's not dependent on any application state. It doesn't need to reload and so on. In order to display that text, we need to use the build function. That can be thought of as the main function of the class, and it's similar to the render function inside of things like React and JSX. So we can effectively render a widget tree. So we need to override the build function, and that's a widget, and pass in the build context, like so. Inside of here, we'll return a new text widget, and the text that we'll say, hello Flutter, and we'll set the text direction to text direction dot left to right. So now we can see that this widget itself, the class of my app, is simply returning a new text widget that says hello Flutter. Let's run this on the device and we'll see what it looks like. At this moment, or perhaps earlier on in the tutorial when you open up Visual Studio Code, you may have been asked to install the Dart code extension. I'd advise installing that because it allows us to edit and debug our Flutter applications on the fly and we don't have to pass out to the terminal. So let's hit F5 and what we'll do is start debugging. We'll want to debug with Dart and Flutter. And as you can see at the bottom inside of our debug console, it's going to open up this inside of the iPhone 10 because I have the iPhone 10 simulator up and running. Alternatively, you could start the Android simulator and run it on that. But I just prefer iOS because I already have the simulator open. 
So the application has opened up and we can see the words hello Flutter on screen, but they're to the top left. So we can imagine that's sort of zero, zero coordinates. And of course it's blocking off half of those words. So let's make it so the text is in the middle of the screen. So this is where we're sort of introduced for the first time, the widget and widget tree concept inside of Flutter. So we don't have a sort of domain specific view templating language that we can use such as HTML or XML. Instead, we're using this widget tree. So we want to return a new center and this will center anything that's a child of center. So we'll set the child equal to a new text. And as you can see, instead of returning the text itself, we're returning now a center that has a child of the text. So this will mean that instead of being at the top left, it should now be in the middle. In order to ensure this updates on your device, you can hit this green arrow here from within inside of Visual Studio Code, and this should restart it and hot reload the application. Here we now have Hello Flutter on screen. It's in the middle, like so. The problem is at this moment though, is that the text itself is quite small. Can't really see that. So we need a way to sort of style this font. Well, let's add a style attribute to our text. And we can say that we want to use a new text style. We'll set the font size to 48.0. And that's because that's a double. And the font weight will be set to font weight dot bold. So as you can see, we have a center that returns a text. And now we've added that style attribute. If we check back in our application, we now have a much bigger text on screen. But this doesn't really look like a normal app. Usually we'd have a nav bar and maybe a container in the middle. Before we jump into that, I'd rather take our text and make it into its own widget. So let's make a text called Hello Flutter Text. And that will extend the stateless widget. And we'll just take this widget build override and we'll paste it into that class. And instead of returning all this, we'll return a new hello flutter text. So if we save this, we should have exactly the same result. And then of course we could use this throughout our application. So it just makes it much easier when it comes to reusing UI. Now let's now make a app bar so that we can take advantage of the iOS and Android features that we've come to know and love. So instead of returning the new Hello Flutter text, I want to return a new material app. Inside of here, we'll put the title to my first Flutter app. And the home page, so this is the default route, will be the new Hello Flutter text. So let's save the file and run this again. So we have largely the same thing as before, but now our text has gone red and we have this yellow underline. Now, if that happens, that's a good sign because what it means is that we need to use a scaffold. The scaffold provides us with the basic material design infrastructure, such as the navigation bar, the drawer, floating action buttons, and so on. So we can create a new widget and that'll be called homepage, which we can use to display this scaffold. So let's do this by making a class called homepage and we'll extend the stateless widget. We'll override the build method once again. But this time we want to return a new scaffold. And the scaffold, as you can see, has a variety of different things. It has everything from an app bar to a drawer and much more. Let's specify the app bar. And we want to return a new app bar that will have a title, which will be a new text widget called this.title. So this will return a title, which we'll pass in to this class in a moment. So right now it's going to give us an error and that's fine. After the app bar, we want to return a body and that's going to be our container. So for now, we'll simply return the new hello flutter text. So let's declare a string called title and inside of our constructor, we'll pass in the title. So our homepage now accepts a title and we'll return a new scaffold as a result that contains the nav bar 
with the title of the title that we pass into this class and the body equal to the hello flutter text. So that will simply be the container underneath the app bar. Finally, all we have to do at this point is change our home route and instead this will be a new home page. We'll pass in the title of home page and hit save. So off to a great start, this is our first Flutter application. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, hit that subscribe button and check out flutteracademy.com for more videos and articles on Flutter. Oh, this you crazy mother.